Hi class, welcome to exercise 4F, the sign rule, where obviously we're going to learn everything about the sign rule today. Our first example will be example 10, where we'll be finding a side length using the sign rule. And your pre-learning for this example will be questions 1 and 2 in the new book and question 4 in the old book. And then we'll do example 11, where we're going to find an angle using the sign rule. And your pre-learning for this example will be questions 3 and 9 in the new book and questions 5 and 11 in the old book. Now before we go ahead, I should point out that this lesson will focus on learning the formula and applying it. Understanding why the rule works will be for a challenge at the end of this block. Okay, let's get on with this lesson, so I'll see you in the introduction. For this whole block, which is the remainder of the unit, we're going to draw our triangles and denote all measurements just like this. Hopefully you can notice how we relate an angle with the opposite side length. And that's because these capital letters indicate an angle. Now the relationship between an opposite angle and its side should be obvious. And if it's not to you, hopefully this will paint a clearer picture. So let's think about two triangles where the side lengths A and B are the same. So I'm going to use a ruler to make sure my measurements are exact, but I'm also going to draw these triangles on top of each other, and you'll see why. So obviously those side lengths denoted as A are the same length, and who cares what B is, right? This angle C that's green would have the opposite side length like this. And the angle that's red would have opposite side length like this. Now it must be 100% obvious that with a bigger angle C, the opposite side length is also bigger. Now when working with the sign rule, we must label a triangle, this triangle, with this angle A relating to this side length A on the other side. And point or angle B relates to side length B, and the same for C. And it's this notation that makes the formula make sense. So let's let me write down for the sign rule, um, the capital letters are representing angles and the lowercase represents side lengths. Okay, so without further ado, let's say what the sign rule is. And that is when we have a triangle denoted like we have above, the side length A divided by sine of the angle A will equal the side length B divided by sine of the angle B and also equal to C, the side length C, divided by sine of C. So to sum that up in clear language, every side length divided by sine of the opposite angle is equal to each other. Of course, we could manipulate these equations. Later on in this lesson, you'll see some useful manipulations such as starting with side length A over sine of A equals side length B over sine of B can help us solve for A if we multiply both sides by sine of capital A. We can also flip these and take the reciprocal. So for example, the sine of A divided by A equals the sine of B divided by B. Then multiply both sides by A and take the inverse sine function of both sides and we could solve for the angle A. But using the sine rule, you're gonna come up against something you probably haven't before. And that is the sine of an angle that's obtuse. So what if we have to work with an obtuse angle? So this is not a rigorous proof, but let me draw a triangle to start with. And then we could think about this side length B times sine of alpha. So what is it? I mean, this is an obtuse angle, right? So what I'm gonna do is draw a line that's parallel to the one that's joining B and form another triangle and mark this angle in here as beta. And then I can draw in this height here and clearly B times sine of beta is equal to that height. But if we figure out sine in the same way, as in sine of the angle times the side length on it equals a height, then clearly B times sine of alpha is the same thing. And dividing both sides by B, then sine of beta is equal to sine of alpha. We also know that our alpha plus beta must be equal to 180. In other words, alpha is equal to 180 minus beta. In fact, beta is also equal to 180 minus alpha. Because the sine of beta is equal to the sine of alpha, and alpha is equal to 180 minus beta, we now see that the sine of beta is the same as the sine of 180 minus beta. So this will become very handy with obtuse angles, and more about that later. But I also should note that we're touching on something that you're going to see later on this year with the unit circle. Anyhow, I want to explain these rules a little bit better I want to explain these rules with something that's a little bit better than my drawing. So let's pop over to GeoGebra with this link here. 
We'll probably use this applet right throughout this block of lessons. So I've coloured the angles, the points and sides, so you can see which relates to which. Now, by moving B to the left, you can see that the angle A increases. And at the same time, so does the opposite length. Also, the angle C decreases and the opposite side decreases. So let's do that one more time. For those of you who want to try the challenge at the end of this block, this line H is the side length A times the sine of C. It's also the side length C times the sine of A. By clicking this button, we can see we have an obtuse triangle here that's got the same length C and its angle is 180 minus 60.74. We can see that the opposite side length to this angle A in the obtuse triangle is longer than the one in the acute triangle. Another point worth making is that um, this long A, 6.5, times sine of C dash or 35.43 degrees is also equal to H. This does give us a few hints about the obtuse rules. Okay, let's pop back to OneNote. All right, as always, you can follow that link along and have a play with the applet yourself. We've now arrived at the end of introduction, but because this is the beginning of a new topic and a departure from how you've used Trig before, I really suggest that you pause the video now and work on the building understanding questions in the new book, which translates to questions one, two, and three in the old book. I really do think it's worth it to get started in a new topic. Anyhow, after you do that, I'll see you in the next section. Okay, for the triangle with angles A, B and C and side lengths A, B and C named appropriately to match the angles, we know from the introduction that because A over sine of B equals B over sine of B, and hopefully you distinguish the capital letters as angles and the small letters as side lengths. So if we know all of the measurements other than the little a, then we can manipulate this formula so that the side length A is equal to B multiplied by the sine of A divided by the sine of B. So seeing that we're looking for side lengths using the sine rule, this is the exact formula we're going to use in example 10, where we have this triangle that I've already drawn that has one side length 7 and these two angles 80 and 75 degrees, plus this other side length x. Now we have to solve for x. It's going to help if you redraw the triangle and name it with the same sort of formula that we used for the other triangles as in the introduction. So in this case, a is equal to x, right? So you know that x divided by sine of 80 has to equal 7 divided by sine of 75. And some of you smart people might have done this already from the start, seeing I did speak about it a minute ago. But you could now turn that into x is equal to 7 times sine of 80 divided by sine of 75. And this is definitely a calculator problem, so let me bash that into the OneNote calculator. And for those of you who squint closely enough, we have 7.1368 yada yada. But to round that off to two decimal places, the 6 makes a 3 become a 4. So we've got x equals 7.14. And that's 7.14 meters, of course. All right, um, that's the only really example I need to show you at this stage, and that's all we're asking for you in these questions. So at this stage, pause the video and do questions one and two in the new book and questions four in the old book. And then I'll see you in the next section. Okay, writing out triangles in exactly the same way. If we just focus on the angles A and B, we know that the sine rule says that A divided by sine of A equals B divided by sine of B. But if you take the reciprocal of both sides, then you can also rewrite that as the sine of A divided by A equals the sine of B divided by B. And this will get much more convenient when we're working for angles, okay? So let's assume we're looking for angle A here. As we stated introduction, we could manipulate that statement and say that the sine of A is equal to A times the sine of B divided by B. And using the inverse sine function, we could see that A is equal to inverse sine of A times sine of B divided by B. The other fact we touched on in the introduction that you're going to have to take account for is what to do when your angle is obtuse. So when we get to use the inverse sine of some X, it's going to give you an angle between 0 and 90 degrees. 
But because sine of 180 minus alpha is the same as sine of alpha, if the angle we're looking for is acute, we'll say the inverse sine of x is equal to alpha. But if it's obtuse, we're going to say that the inverse sine of x is equal to 180 minus alpha. You're going to have to use your brains to decide which one is obtuse or acute based on the question. Now let's put this to work in example 11, where we're going to find the angle theta in the following triangles to one decimal place as well. All right, in part A, we have this triangle that has an angle theta and another angle 83 degrees, but also these side lengths 10 centimeters and 9 centimeters. So in this triangle, theta and 9 centimeters are opposite to each other, and 88 degrees and 10 centimeters are opposite to each other. So that means that sine of theta divided by 9 is going to equal sine of 88 divided by 10. Okay, in other words, I'm saying that theta is equal to capital A and 9 is equal to lower case A. And 88 and 10 are B and B respectively. And now you can see how they fit in with this formula over here. All right, let's continue on by multiplying both sides by 9. And then taking the inverse side of both sides, we end up with theta is equal to the inverse sine of 9 times sine of 88 over 10, which is definitely a calculator problem. So our answer wants one decimal place, 64.08 becomes 64.1 degrees. So it's pretty easy with an acute angle, right? So let's go on to part B, where we have a triangle that has an angle theta, another angle 40 degrees, and side length six and four. So having a close look at theta, I think it's time for an obtuse angle alert. All right, so let's have a look at the angles and the side lengths, and we can see that theta is opposite to six and 40 degrees is opposite to four. So hopefully you're comfortable enough with the sine rule to say now that sine of theta divided by six will equal sine of 40 divided by four. Then we can multiply both sides by six and I better pause it there, I forgot to put zeros in for the 40. So where were we? Yes, that's right, multiplying both sides by six. And therefore theta is gonna equal the inverse sine of sine of 40 multiplied by three on two. And I've done the three on two because I've just simplified the six and four there. All right, let's bang this in the calculator. And we've got a 74.61 and some other numbers. So that's definitely theta equals 74.6 degrees. Or does it? Well, no, it doesn't, okay? Because theta's obtuse. So therefore theta actually equals 180 minus 74.6. And that is 110 minus 4.6 is 106. That's 105.4. All right, so you could definitely see that was a lot more complicated. Well, not really. You just need to know if it's obtuse and then you do the 180 minus 74.6. But at this stage, you should pause your video and do questions three and nine in the old book and questions five and 11 in the new book. I said old when I was writing new there, didn't I? And new when I was writing old. Maybe I'm getting old. Anyhow, before you duck off and do those questions, please remember it's really important that you understand how to work with sine of obtuse angles. I know it's not uh, super complicated, but you do need to be clear what you're doing and make good decisions. I'll uh, see you in the summary. All right, while I want you to just work with the sine rule in this lesson, don't forget we're gonna try and prove if it's true at the end of this block. And hopefully GeoGera gave you a few hints. But there's definitely something that's worth considering. So while a triangle has six measurements, three measurements are all we need to tell us everything about that triangle, as long as one of those measurements is a side length. But what about Pythagoras or trig, I hear you ask? Wasn't there just two measurements in those? Well, the straightforward answer is no. Knowing it was a right angle triangle and two other things actually means you know three things about it. Okay, um, a successful student in this lesson will know how the sine rule relates to the ratio of sides and angles in a non-right angled triangle. Know the criteria of a triangle that must be known to apply the sine rule. Know how to apply the sine rule to find an angle or a side length in a non-right angled triangle. Understand that some information of triangles can lead to two possible triangles, either involving an acute angle or an obtuse angle. 
And finally, be able to use the sine rule to find acute or obtuse angles. Okay, that's it then. I'll see you guys in the next lesson, in class or in the video. Bye.